that. And that's why we're joined by Chef Marshall. To your questions. Definitely. Food questions, cooking Tomatoes, questions, chef. walnuts, olive oils. You need healthy fats to help you. And your lunch is figured out. You got your snacks figured out because you plan them. Just we want to empower you to help yourself in the kitchen and in life so you can make the... The right foods are going to make your day better, and the wrong foods are going to they're going to slow the absorption of sugar in the bloodstream. You want to get folks, these. nourishing is different than eating. You can eat yeah, to live. So when you, you wake up, when that alarm goes off Monday morning, it's delicious. These right. recipes will be on our website, but where yep. else can people go to get other recipes? From yes, you? well, you can go to chefmarshallobrien.com. <sighs> hey, welcome everybody. It's Chef Marshall here. So glad to be with you tonight. Got an awesome, awesome show for you. You know, every week, every day, I, I'm always talking to people, and they're saying, hey, chef, i got questions in the kitchen. I'm not sure how to do this. I'm not sure how to do that. Listen, folks, there's a lot of challenges that people have, and a lot of those challenges become problems that can affect their day and affect their life. That's why we put the show together, because we want to empower you to help you in the kitchen and your life so you can make the changes that you want to have in your life. Maybe you just want to cook more real food. Maybe you want to eat better to feel better. What a great concept, you know, seriously. Maybe you just want to have great tasting food to help you get through the day. Well, listen, you need to have four things to make that happen. Number one is you need to understand why smart nutrition can work for you. Maybe you're going through physical therapy right now and you need to reduce the body pain so you can speed up the recovery process. That would be a compelling reason to understand how smart nutrition could work for you. Okay, so you need to understand why. Second thing is you need to have a pathway, a process. Maybe you want to figure out, look, this is where I am, this is where I want to, where I am, and where I want to be. Give you that pathway, that process. That's why we, got, we have our smart nutrition workbook. Helps you get started, tells you what to do and how to get started. Third thing you need is you need tools and resources to help you along the way on your journey. Like this show, like our Smart Nutrition Cookbook Meal Planner. We got awesome recipes in there. We teach you how to organize your kitchen. Matter of fact, check out our uh, special discount promo right now, Smart Nut 2. When you get both of those books, you get the discount. So check it out. Go at thechefmarshallobrien.com to do that. Then finally, the fourth thing that you need to make all this work is you need the support. You need the reinforcement. That's why we have this show. And we also just launched our Empower 12 program. It's a year-long program. It helps you take control of your life and gives you the tools, resources, where every week I email you education, motivation, coaching tips, recipes to help you transform your life to do the things that you want to do and feel the way you want to feel. Pretty awesome stuff. So get that going. Bottom line, folks, if you want to take, if you want to take control of your life in the kitchen and make life a little easier for you, you need to have a plan. Thursday night, start thinking about your plan. Start thinking about what are you going to cook on the weekend. Have your plan in place, and then you can go get your groceries. You start prepping, get your friends, get your family, get people involved so the pressure is not all just on you. Because if it's just about you making all of it happen, it's going to be hard to do. Cook your meals, and then when Monday morning comes around, beep, 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 alarm goes off, you wake up, you got peace of mind knowing that you've got your breakfast figured out, you've got lunch and snacks figured out. Okay, life's going to be a lot easier when you're in control of what you're eating and you know what you're doing rather than being controlled by whatever is available to you. Big, big difference, so I really want you to be thinking about that. All right, got an awesome recipe for you. I can't wait to show you. All of our shows, we always encourage people to write in with questions, you know, whether we're doing a recorded show or we're doing a live show. Let us know what you want us to talk about on the show. Could be cooking related, nutrition related, shopping tips, could be picky eating, adults and kids, okay? You know, let us know what you what you want to know and we're gonna answer those on the show. Today's recipe, awesome recipe. It's a multi-purpose recipe. We have a beef kale scramble. Great breakfast, do it during the week, have it on the weekends, okay? And we have roasted beets and sweets. It's gonna be really, really tasty. We'll show you how to do it. For these recipes, we're gonna use the following ingredients, starting with some leftover, uh, could be a slow cooker pot roast, some leftover steak. Fancy. We're gonna have some kale. We have some garlic powder and some curry powder. We've got some shallots and some parsley, a little red pepper, and for the, of course, and of course, can't forget the eggs, otherwise it wouldn't be a scramble, right? 
Then for the beets and sweets, aka sweet potato, yams, whatever you want to call them. For the for the roasted and for the roasted beets and yams, we have some beets and yams. There you go. Pretty simple. All right. Let's get started. First things we're going to do is I'm going to show you how easy it can be to prepare the roasted beets and yams. If you, uh, you know, sometimes yams get confused with sweet potatoes and they're technically different, but oftentimes at grocery stores they're going to call yam sweet potatoes or sweet potato yams. I want you to look for the orange ones. And I think we talked about this in previous shows and don't show this people at the grocery store are doing this, but you can just kind of casually, uh, you know, use your nail to make sure that you know that it's actually orange, okay? But we're going to use, we're going to use the yams here, and an easy way that you can peel is I'm using, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, hold, kind of use your thumb as a guide as you're doing here, and then just peeling it like that. What's that? Ah, oh, like that. Jeez, Okay. All right, I'm going to peel them just like this. And then we are going to make sure we have all those spots. If you want to buy these pre-cut, that's fine. But for this recipe, we want them very, very small, di pretty small dice. And I don't think you can buy them for it with a pretty small dice. So you may just want to uh, make it happen like that. We're going to take plank it on a side like this so now it's flat and it's sturdy and you don't uh, injure yourself and then we're going to cut do a series of planks here this is it's really important that you have a good sturdy strong knife here when you're doing this otherwise it could be very very dangerous then we're going to cut sticks so you can see what we're doing here then now we have all these great sticks like this, and we're just going to chop it up. Chopping them up into little pieces here. See, look at all those nice little pieces, right? I. I lined my sheet pan. You can use parchment paper or foil, whatever you want to do. Okay. Then we're going to take our, I used foil in this case. Again, you can use parchment or whatever. We're going to push, put that onto our sheet pan. If you're making a big batch of these, you may want to do two sheet pans. So we have that going. And then we're going to take our beets. Now, for beets, I tend to wear gloves. Uh, if I'm doing a lot of work, I'll, I might wear gloves just because it can get a little messy. You don't have to do that. It will come off, um, but something to think about there. So let's see. One little tip when it comes to using beets is try to find beets as far as like convenience and ease. Try to find ones that aren't knobby with a lot of crevices because that can be a little challenging to, to effectively and efficiently peel them. But as you can see, I... Just I'm holding the beets in my hand, and then I'm using my peeler. Now there's a variety of way that you can. There's a variety of ways that you could peel these. Like you could literally just slow cook these, and then you're gonna slow cooker with just the beets and nothing else, and they're gonna be tender, and the skin will peel right off. That would be one way to do it, and then just do a uh, just actually be done with them like that. I think that'd be just fine. I want to get all the barriers out of the way when you're preparing these recipes. Speaking of which, you might be wondering, why am I using beets in this recipe? Not only are they colorful and they have a nice sweet taste to them, but beets are rich in folate. Folate is really significant when it comes to brain development and helping with emotional resiliency. Winter times, when it's cold and it's dark, if you're not getting enough vitamin D, if you're not getting the right kind of nutrients, it can have a severe toll on your you know, mental capacities. It can make you, you can, you can get depressed if you're not eating the right foods. A lot of people don't realize it, that they might not get in the right nutrients in the winter time. So foods rich in folate, like beets or dark leafy greens, which we have in, that, in the kale or spinach, it's gonna help you be more emotionally resilient in 
times like, uh, you know, in the cold, dark winter time. So it's something to think about. Get those into your life if you're not already doing that. All right. So we have our beets all peeled up here. And we are going to then, just like we did with the sweet potato yams, we're going to gonna get these prepped, chopping off. I want a sturdy, you, see, you notice how I cut off I cut off the bottom so we have a sturdy base so that you do not flop around, uh, not you personally, but the beet doesn't flop around. We want you to be safe. So we, just like that, and then we're gonna do a series of cuts, letting the knife do the work using my knuckles using my knuckles to guide the knife and now we have we have all of these beats just like this and we're going to do just like we did with the yams we're going to make the sticks and then chop them up just like that yes there's a question for tonight I'm using gloves tonight because it just helps with the clean, you know, cleaning up factor. It's convenient, not mandatory. Okay, you don't have to. Beet juice will stain your clothes, and it's really interesting. Like in the ancient Egyptian times and other ancient civilization times, they used beet juice to color, you know, to dye clothing. You didn't know I was a historian, did you? Uh, yeah, they used it to color clothing, dye hair, and that sort of thing. So if you're looking for um, eco-friendly ways to, you know, use natural food colorings. There you go, use the beets. But that's why I'm using gloves today. All right, we have these awesome colorful beets here that we just chopped up. And then we're going to, we're going to toss them with a little bit of olive oil and then pop them in the oven for 35 to 40 minutes. I mean, it doesn't get any, doesn't get any easier than that, right? Pop those in the oven, we're good to go. A little TV magic, watch this. In the oven, boom, presto. We have our root veggies in the oven right now, and we are going to work on our beef kale scramble. This is an awesome recipe. Slow cooker beef, leftover steak, whatever you want to use, leftover chicken, any kind of cooked meat you can use. We have our pan preheating. We always talk about the basic fundamentals. Make sure you got a good pan, make sure it's preheated, make sure it's ready to go, and it just about is. We're going to add a little bit of olive oil to the pan. I want to make sure that pan's nice and hot. As you can see, we're getting a nice little shimmer in there. And once that, I'm going to turn the heat up at about medium, medium heat to start. And then we're going to add our, add our leftover beef in here. Now, a couple things to think about is you've cooked on the weekend and you're doing a pot roast for the week save some of that or make a little bit extra so now you have that with the roasted beets and yams that are in the oven you can make that for a couple different recipes i want you to think about how can you make something and then use it in two or three different ways or make stuff that you could freeze and then just simply bring out and reheat this is one of those examples okay certainly with with the greens that we'll get into in just a second same kind of thing all right so i chose to use beef because beef's high in iron, and a lot of times people they can have low iron deficiencies. And if, and if you find yourself uh, struggling from an energy standpoint, especially for ladies, a lot of research has said that a lot of women suffer from fatigue because they're not getting enough protein into their system. So make sure if that's your case, by 2 o'clock you're dragging and struggling to get through important meetings, you may, wanna, may not be getting enough protein. Maybe you get more meat in your life, maybe you get some more other plant-based proteins, but it's really pro important to get that. All right, our pan is probably hot enough, and I'm going to try to feel it without actually looking at it. Okay, there we go. Looks good. We're going to add our beef to it right now. Excellent. Turn up our heat a little bit. Yes. Yes. Bushra says, are there any alternatives to the meat for religions that don't allow beef or pork? Absolutely, yeah. If you don't want, if, if you're not, if you don't do cer certain meats, I want you to do whatever makes you feel comfortable. Chicken works. You could use you now. Just maybe. I, I always love throwing in some garbanzo beans or black eyed peas or kidney beans. You know, if you want to do that. If you want to do tofu, if you want to do other types of vegetarian proteins, that's fine. Or just not throw anything in there. Totally fine. This is a very filling recipe, very filling meal, whether you put meat in there or not. 
All right, we've got a sizzle going, and we want to get start mixing this up. This is the perfect time when you want to get the flavors and the aromas going, and you want a sizzle, you want a hot pan, you want hot oil. This is what we're going to get our spices in here. A lot of people love to use spices. I always encourage using spices for a variety of reasons. Number one, makes your food taste fantastic. Number two, there's a lot of healing benefits with spices from being anti-inflammatory. They can help serve as a, as a digestive aid. Those are real benefits to, your, to having food in your life besides just feeding you. So I really want you to think about how can you make wor food work for you and not just be something to feed you to get you through the day. All right, so we've got the sizzle in the pan. I'm going to add curry powder here. We've got the curry powder. Woo, pretty cool. I like that. Isn't that pretty awesome? Well, I want to save that curry powder. Come on, <laughs> don't go away like that. We're going to add the curry powder and garlic powder. Stir that up. And you're going to start to smell the aromas. Get awesome smell of vision going on here right now. Gonna get, let that go. I'm going to turn the heat up to about medium high at this point. Not super hot because I don't want to burn this and, and scorch this stuff. While this is cooking and being really happy in the pan, I am going to chop up our kale. I'm take a bunch of kale. I'm going to use the stems. I try to use as much of whatever we're cooking with as possible. I don't like to waste food. If you want to, you can do this a couple different ways. You can make a few different, a few different cuts down the middle and then start slicing as I'm doing, however you want to do it. When you get into the thick stems, I want you to make thinner slices. Otherwise, the thick stems will be thick in your food. But when they're thin, then they'll, then they'll be they'll be tender and, they're cook, and they'll cook quicker. So you can see I am just, that is pretty cool. Get that all done. All right, okay, got that. And we're gonna add, we're gonna add this to our, right there. Yes, question. Celeste asks, what are the best varieties of kale to use for, the di for this dish? I uh, appreciate you asking the question. If you are used to having kale, you know, if, you, if you eat a lot of kale, there's different varieties. They all pretty much taste the same. If you're not used to having kale and you want to uh, and you, and you try it, my recommendation is to buy baby kale. Baby kale is, number one, it's very tender. And two, it has a very mild taste so that you will, um, you know, tender, meaning it will cook quicker, and the mild taste, meaning it doesn't have that metallic bitter taste when it's raw. So it'll be a really good introduction. Um, so you can use dinosaur, it's called dinosaur kale or Lacatino kale. You can use purple kale like we're using. There's also one called Savoy kale, which you see as a garnish on food a lot, which kale is much more than a, gar much more than a garnish, all right? Um, having said that, I am using kale because dark leafy greens, high nutrients, uh, high in folate as I talked about before, uh, rich in magnesium, natural muscle relaxer. So if you got a really stressful day and your body's really tense, get some good magnesium rich foods into your life and it's going to help a lot. Look folks, food can work for you or it's going to work against you. It's as simple as that. You can eat certain foods that will actually perpetuate stress in the body and make you more tense and more tight and increase inflammation, or you can eat foods that will lower the inflammation. I'm on my feet all the time, so I want to make sure that I'm eating inflammation-reducing foods. That's important to me. This would be a good recipe to do that. I'm going to mix it up. You may want to add a little bit of water in here to generate some steam. The thinner the kale, the quicker it will cook. So we got that going. Let this cook. We're going to let this cook a little bit. Uh, at this point, you know, you may want to check on your roasted beets and, and yams to make sure you haven't uh, charred them or, you know, turned them into carbon, but we haven't been cooking that long, and uh, I know mine are good, so 
Oh, oh, we're all we're all set there. But it's good to pay attention. You know, cooking is all about the awareness, and it's all about you know recognizing like time management, and you know you, that's why I started with the beets and the yams first because those take the longest to cook. Whereas you know making an egg scramble is going to go by really really quick. By the way, you could make this minus the eggs, have it all done, and then just throw an egg in there. Like you could have. You could have all this done. You could eat it just like that without the eggs. And if you want to do the eggs in a later date, you could just take some of this out of the out of the fridge, like you've portioned it, heat it up in a pan with some eggs. Boom, you're ready to go. That makes sense, folks. Yeah, good. All right. So we got this cooking. This looks great. I'm gonna throw the lid on while that's going, and I'm gonna let that sizzle for a bit. We are gonna take some shallots. Shallots are. Uh, kind of a hybrid of onion and garlic. I mean, they, they really taste, they don't really taste like garlic, but they have a nice mild taste. So we're going to, we're going to thinly slice it, and then we'll add that to our recipe. If you want to use other, you know, if you want to use just regular onions, or you want to use onions and garlic, doesn't really matter to me. Get that. We use shallots, A, because I think they're a little fun, with the mild flavor, that's great. But they also have, they also have a compound called allicin, and allicin is is also found in garlic, which has antimicrobial and antibacterial properties. Now it also has anti. Um, uh, I'm trying to make a really funny joke about bad breath. Basically, obviously, onions and garlic will ward off uh, people if you have strong odor. Some people can get like, some people react to onions and garlic, uh, get more body odor than others, and I'm not going to get into that because I'm not a scientist. But if you've experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. So we're gonna we're gonna put these in our pan and let them continue to cook there. Boy, it smells awesome, beautiful color. I'm going to close my lid again. Let, let the steam work. Let the steam work and help uh, pull the moisture out of the kale so that the kale can keep cooking. Then we're going to do our red pepper here. And a peel, I'm going to peel up my pepper, just some, if you have any jarred, roasted red peppers, that would taste really nice that you could do. You could do that instead, instead of fresh bell peppers. Red bell peppers, orange bell peppers, yellow bell peppers are high in vitamin C. And vitamin C, it can help with, um, with help removing cortisol from your system. A lot of people don't realize that. I talked about magnesium in the kale can help, re uh, help prevent the release of cortisol. And vitamin C rich foods can actually help uh, get rid of cortisol. So vitamin C rich foods, good stuff, boost your immune system, good for, good for reducing stress as well. They taste great, they're colorful. And the more, uh, you know, green bell peppers, yeah, they're okay, right? They don't have a lot of flavor. The more color they have, the more flavor they have. So keep that in mind as well. We're going to add our bell peppers to our pan. It's fun watching Gabriel dance back and forth between camera and control panel. You gotta pay attention that you don't have the your pan so hot that it just knocks out all the moisture in in the pan and dry out your food. So pay attention to that. But we should be okay because there's quite a bit of moisture in the greens. If you're using chard or spinach or arugula or escrol or uh, those types of greens are going to have a lot more water content than kale wood or collard greens or turnip greens, that sort of thing. So that's something to, and they will cook in half the time too, something to think about. Boy, this just looks phenomenal. Look at that, it looks, that looks really cool. All right, at this point I am going to add, oh actually before I add the eggs, I'm going to chop up my parsley. And then we're going to add the eggs. And we're going to add our egg. We're going to chop up our parsley, and we're going to add up our add our eggs. Yes. Veronica is wondering what are other complementary herbs that you could add to with the parsley. Boy, there's a lot of awesome herbs you could do. Fresh thyme, a little bit of rosemary, fresh basil, a little bit of oregano would be. 
excellent in here. Great question. If you, you know, I love cooking with herbs and spices. You always got to remember that if you have fresh or dried, they have different ratios. Dried herbs are three times more potent. So if you're cooking with dried oregano instead of fresh, you're going to use three times less dried herbs as a result. Now we're going to add our eggs to the recipe. And this is going to go by fast because we're, it's, it's going to cook, it's going to cook quick because we have a nice hot pan. So we've added our eggs to the mix. If you want to, you know, whisk them in advance, that's fine. I'm just throwing them all in here and I'm mixing them up just like this. I'm going to add our, uh, a little bit of uh, salt in there and a little bit of pepper. We are set. Oh, this just looks wonderful, 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 wonderful. This will be done in probably less than a minute. Remember, it really comes down to having the right tools, using the right temperature, feeling comfortable with what you're doing. If, if, if I'm making this look really easy and you intimidate you a little bit, use the recipe, okay? It makes it really, really simple. And just take your time. Take things in steps here. Look at that. That looks spectacular. I'm going to turn off the heat here. This is pretty much done. Now, depending on how you like your eggs, I like my eggs a little more hard. So I might just let it go for another, you know, 10 seconds with the heat on. But I've turned off the heat. All right. So, oh, cilantro would be a really nice one in there. Maybe you want to chop up some fresh chilies. I like spice, so I would add that in there. That just looks excellent. Tasty, yummy. I'm going to grab out of the oven. I'm going to grab our roasted beets and sweets now. And thanks to TV Magic, they are all done. We're going to take, and you can mix these up in a bowl. You could just put them right on. You know, I like to put this scramble on top of the, on top of the beets and sweets. So we're going to portion this up. This just looks great. What camera should I do? Okay. Just like that. This looks delicious. Now we're going to give it a taste. Mmm. Doesn't get any better than this, folks. You can make the beets and sweets in advance that are in your fridge already cooked. You can just take them out, warm them up, or put them in, put them on your plate and put the hot scramble on top and it'll warm them up. It's really, really simple. Again, make that pot roast in advance or cooked extra meat so you can just add it to your scramble, make it really, really simple. I want you to tune in every week because we're going to provide you fantastic, delicious, and nourishing recipes and give you help to do your best with smart nutrition. With our program, you're going to love the way you feel. Get started today, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.